Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I can't wait to show you guys what we have to talk about. So I had a friend send me a little Instagram post about fabric shoelaces and I distinctly remember doing them when I was a kid. But nowadays it's much more easy to do them with the modern technology and the awesome machines that we have available to us. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you guys about doing our fabric shoelaces three ways. First of all, I'm going to talk about how you can sew them, and then I'm going to talk to you about how you can do them with the three quarters inch belt loop binder on your cover stitch machine, and then I'm also going to talk to you about how we can do them with a rolled edge. So first of all, I'm going to start with how you can sew them. So when you sew them, what you're going to do is you're going to start by cutting your strips in one to one and a half inch. Then you're going to fold those strips, the raw edges, into center, and then you're going to fold it in half again. So again, from your strip, you fold your raw edges into center, and then you fold the little folded edges together, and you top stitch. So right here, this is an example of just a tiny little sewn strip. So the whole thing is top stitched together. This would be super cute because it's a skinny, tiny little one inch strip that's been turned into a little shoelace. What about making that for a little boy with a matching bow tie? Stinking cute. So that's super easy and you can do that on your sewing machine. Okay, the second thing we're gonna talk about is doing it with a belt loop binder. So on your cover stitch machine, you set up for a wide cover stitch and you attach your three quarters inch belt loop binder. You're going to cut your strips into about seven eighths of an inch wide. It needs to be a little bit skinnier because the attachment is going to roll the edges under for you. Okay, once you've done that, you're going to feed your strip into your binder and you put it completely under your foot. Once it's completely under your foot, the needles are gonna be able to take the fabric and start it off at the beginning. When you're done with your strip, you just need to finish your ed edges, the ends of your shoelace, by turning and turning and maybe even throwing a little knot in there. All right, so let me show you that one. That's this one right here. This little one is done with the three quarter inch belt loop binder and it is so stinking cute and I decided to do holiday ones. So the cover stitch portion is done with the little cover stitch portion on the back and then the front is just two strips of thread from your two needles, your left and right needle. So the cover part is on the back and then the two strips of thread are on the front. Okay, so let me show you guys how that's done. So basically, again, you're going to start off by making sure your strip is fed into your machine and into your binder attachment. Your binder attachment lines right up to your foot and with your foot, you've got your left needle notch and your right needle notch. And I've got cover stitch wide so that I can get a nice good strip on this. The fabric is underneath the foot completely and then at this point I'm going to make some noise. <laughs> the machine does this beautiful little cover stitch on the back and then you've got your two needles on the front. And so you end up with this awesome little strip it's, you can be used to cut into belt loops, or again, you can turn them into fabric shoelaces. So that's this example right here. Stinking cute! Okay, so let's talk about the third way that you can do it. The third way is using a rolled edge on your serger. So with the serger, you set it up and you can make this one here. All right, so let's talk through that. So with this one, you're using your rolled edge, so you'll cut your strips into one inch. You'll set your serger up for the three thread rolled edge. Once you've got it set up for the three thread rolled edge, make sure it's very important on this one to have your length at 0.75 R for rolled, which is the shortest length possible because you want that um, thread to end up being a solid line of color on your fabric. And then you're going to lay your strips two different, I did two different ones because I wanted the contrast. You lay your strips wrong sides together. Once you've got them wrong sides together, you're going to uh, do your little serge, your, your rolled edge down one side of your fabric um, strips and you cut off just a little bit of them. Then you're going to leave good tails at your start and your finish because you need those tails. You're going to cut 45 degree angle on your ends so that you have a nice little pointy tip to the start of your shoelace. 
See how it kind of like comes down to a nice little point? That way you can get it into the hole a little bit easier. Okay, then you're gonna set the point just underneath your needle with your thread tail off to the back because you wanna tug that thread tail at the start so you can get it going a little bit more easy. Once you've done that, you've got your 45 degree angle at the other end. You're gonna tie knots in your tails and then just apply a little bit of fray check. Fray check is just kind of like a little bit of a glue. And what that does, it just seals the ends and keeps everything from fraying and coming apart. Okay, let's talk about that one real quick. So with the fray check, you just put that on, let it dry and go from there. All right, so here we have one side is already complete and I've got my wrong sides together and I've got the tip of my fabric underneath my presser foot there and I'm going to take a hold of my tails on the back so that I have a little something to get started with. Let me come around on this side. It'll be a little bit easier for me. So then you end up with a beautiful little rolled edge on the other side. So easy, so pretty, so complete and finished looking. And with that one, you end up with strips that are a little bit beefier. So that way you've got some nice colorful things. And as you can see with the two different um, fabrics, when you're putting it through, you have one up on one side and the other one up on the other side. So each little set of holes ends up with a different contrasting pattern and print on your fabric. So cute. Super easy, super awesome. Three ways to do it. I hope one of them works for you. Have fun with it. You can do it for holidays, like I said, to spice up your old kicks, or you can do it as a simple little gift for somebody. Kids don't cost all that much, and you can get them just about anywhere. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. As always, you can visit us on our blog at www.sewing.net or you can visit us on our YouTube channel if you search for the Sewing Studio Fabric Superstore, which is a purple dot, and you'll look for 5-Minute Fridays there, but there's also other education and inspiration available. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.